I worked in pharmaceutical marketing for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the one thing you can count on is if you have a stance, you can find data to back up that stance, no matter what it is. That's right. And so what I love about you and the work that you do is you really do your best to look at all of the cumulative data and then right. synthesize that into a very, uh, you know, very clear uh, thesis, right? So um, what are your thoughts, since we're talking about vegan diet, what are your thoughts on vegan diet, what the data is saying versus the carnivore diet, keto, all of these things that are going on? Um, what's the data telling us? I think that the data is really solid today, that increasing animal protein in the diet accelerates aging and shortens human lifespan. And that's and, uh, dairy I, as well as the, the meat? Yes, I think that's pretty meat. solid. Okay. However, it also, the same data in the same studies shows increasing plant protein it extends human lifespan and that you can design design plant-based diets to be low in protein, too low in protein to maximize human lifespan and, and to maximize um, quality of life, health span. So there are a lot of people in the plant-based community deny that a vegan diet can be low in protein. And I'm saying, well, you know, we have people, and I've had experience over the decades of taking care of people on predominantly fruitarian diets where they're not eating enough beans and nuts and grains and greens to get enough protein where they're eating maybe 80% or more of the diet from fruit. And they may survive, do pretty well in their you know, 30s and 40s and 50s. But as we age and as our ability to assimilate protein goes down with aging, it leads to decreased immune function, more fungal infections, more increase of pneumonia and infectious illnesses. And this is my observation over my 40 years of practice with people on those type of plant-based diets. So I'm also advocating people do pay attention to plant protein, but, I, but I'd like them to increase their protein with things like soybeans and flax seeds and hemp seeds and almonds and, and beans and, and, you know, and, and green vegetables and artichokes and asparagus and broccoli. And, you know, they, our diet is very relatively high in protein because we're not using oil. When people pour oil on their food, they're taking fat with no protein with it. But when you take the oil out and you replace it with nuts and seeds, you're taking your fat with protein at the same time. So to the extent you switch a nut and seed for an oil, then you're extracting protein from the diet. Did you follow me? In proportion. But aren't you increasing your carbs though to, to, to too high of a rate at that point? Now you're talking about diabetes and things like that. No, we're having no refined carbs at all. We're eating no sugar, no maple syrup, no honey, no white flour. Where all of our carbs are coming from whole grains, intact whole grains, fresh fruit. It's all intracellular glucose. And here's the thing is that when you're eating animal products, the saturated fat distorts the shape and function of the insulin receptor. So now you respond more unfavorably to a mango or oatmeal. Because even now, even things that are relatively glycemically moderate, not excessively glycemic like white flour or white rice, even moderate glycemic foods, you react unfavorably because now your, your insulin receptors are distorted and made ineffective. They've developed insulin resistance, either because your body fat's too high or because you're consuming too much saturated fat from animal products. So these That's people on keto right? diets or carnivore yeah. diets they say, look, I can't eat a mango because look at after my meal, my sugar goes to 300. Yeah, because your insulin receptor is destroyed from all the meat you're eating and all the coconut oil and stuff you're eating. You know, so us plants are the animal protein that's destroying the insulin receptors, not all of the sugar. It's the animal products and the, animal, and the saturated fat in animal products that particularly distorts wow. and weakens the insulin receptor. So now you don't respond normally when you have a normal insulin load, right? So it's body fat that matters, not dietary fat. It's the type of diet. See, I can have, my diet can have fat from nuts and seeds. It's not sat much, I'm not taking much saturated fat, but also because the fat from nuts and seeds is absorbed so slowly over hours, the body can preferentially burn it for energy instead of storing it from fat. Most Americans get their fats from animal products and from oils because animal products and oils absorb fat so rapidly into the bloodstream, you get such a peak, a spike, I call it a caloric rush of fat. Now it has to be stored as fat. It can't be burned for energy. And once you store it as fat, you're telling the body not to burn fat. You're telling the body to store fat. So I'm, so I'm um, plant-based and, and, and I have low body fat. I actually have lower body fat now than I did when I was 38 coming out of medical school and residency. I was mentioning that before. Um, I have more time to exercise and sleep and to eat right, you know, more concentration on that. But I'm saying you shouldn't develop high blood pressure as you age and you shouldn't develop increasing body fat as you age. 
we should keep our body fat favorable as we age to keep a low body fat. And that's how we slow the aging process, not by cutting out all the, the carbohydrate out of our diet. Wow. So we want, because the, the, these carbohydrates we get from plants have protein mixed in them at the same time. Like beans are high protein food, but they contain a lot of carbohydrate too. They're about 30% protein and about 60% carbohydrate. That's a bean, right? Now, the 60% carbohydrate in a bean doesn't get absorbed because, because about a sixth of that is, is resistant starch. It passes through, the, it goes in the toilet bowl, those carbohydrates. So now instead of being 60% carbohydrate and 30% protein, it's now only 50% absorbable carbohydrate. 50%, not 60%, because half of it's lost, because a lot of it's lost. But then the amount of absorbable protein as a percent of total calories absorbed is now not 30%, it's more like 35%, which is more than meat. So, and then same thing with nuts and seeds, by the way. Nuts and seeds may have 10, 15% protein, but because all the fat is not biologically accessible, because the sterols and stanols pull the, in the nuts and seeds that bind fat, carry fat out into the toilet bowl. So because all the fat calories from nuts and seeds aren't absorbed, even though it looks it's only 15% protein, it's actually more like eating 20% protein because out of the most calories you consumed, the fat was lost into the toilet. So I'm saying here that vegetables and nuts and seeds and beans are rich sources of, are rich sources of protein. And some of the people following my nutritional recommendations, eating nutritarian diets, are getting more protein than people eating a diet that contains fish or meat or eggs. And the reason they're getting more protein is because those people eating meat or fish or eggs are pouring oil on their food, or they're using honey and sugar and white flour, and they're eating foods. Part of their caloric intake has zero protein. You know what I mean? Whereas our diet, we're not putting anything. Everything has some protein in it, and it overall adds up at the end of the day. And I've Can you I added that this down some more because uh, that's a big, big thing um, that a lot of friends and family are um, resisting this diet that me and my family are on because they yeah. say, you know the whole thing about animal protein. You got to eat meat, you need protein. So can you just break that down a little bit more? Um, You're saying that when people do eat meat, they're not actually absorbing it because of the oils they're putting on? No, I'll explain it. Okay. Okay. You know, there there was a study out of England that showed that vegans had lower, had more hip fractures and less bone mass than people in meat-based diets. That meat made them bigger and stronger with stronger bones. So I said, okay, good. Let's analyze those studies because that's not consistent with other studies that show that you get more calcium loss eating meat. And when we analyzed the data from the study, we found that those vegans in those groups were not eating healthy, a healthy diet. They were eating white pasta, hmm. a lot of bread, a lot of oil. And I consider white flour a sugar equivalent, sugar and white flour in their diet. Their diet, when analyzed for protein, had about approximately... 10% of calories from protein in the diet. And their level of calcium in the diet was low because they weren't eating a lot of vegetables either. Their calcium was about 400 milligrams of calcium a day in that group. Compared to the meat-based diet people who are averaging about 15% of calories from protein, you know, and about 600 milligrams of calcium a day. Okay, so then I said, what are we getting on a nutritarian diet? Then what, I, what if you follow the diet I recommend? Let's analyze that. And we analyzed that. And we found that Because people ate beans every day and green vegetables every day and nuts and seeds every day and intact, that we added it all up. And because they weren't eating oil in the meat-based diet, they might have eggs for breakfast and a burger for dinner or something, but they were having so much calories from either white, white bread or from oil or from sugar or from eating a croissant or whatever, from butter. They were, they were having so many wasted calories that had no protein that the nutritarian diet had more grams of protein at the same caloric load. So the nutritarian diet came out to be about 16 to 17% calories and protein compared to the 15% on those people eating meat as a percent, as total percent or grams of protein consumed. And the calcium content was higher than people eating dairy products was because almost everything we ate had calcium, including the, you know, the, including the beans and the green vegetables. Mm. 